Hello, I'm Gerali and today we are seeing more things about state. If you didn't see the previous episode, I really recommend you to see it. Otherwise, let's begin. So last episode we've seen what is a state and for what is it used and how to use it. And today we're gonna see the other side of it more in depth. And in order to see this, we're gonna see at first the uh, properties of our state, the settings mainly, the replication mode, we're gonna see object type variables, array type variables and trigger type variables. So let's do this. Uh, let's start with the state settings. Uh, inheritance. This settings lets you create a hierarchy of state. In simple terms, all properties from the parent state are created on the child state, so you don't need to duplicate them. If you have very similar state, for example, we can take a boat state and our boat state would have a name, health, passenger count, and of course the transform in order to know where he is on the scene and let's say we want a battleship let's create its state so first we're gonna select in the inheritance the parent boat state and so we're gonna add new properties to this state like cannon count and prisoner count and voila we have a battleship state which have the same properties as a boat and in addition to new ones. We can do the same, simply create a new state, another one, and let's call it galleon boat state. And in here, we're gonna simply select the uh, boat state and add a property in order to uh, manage the barrels count on the boat and voila. So this is mainly why we use inheritance. At the side of inheritance, we have is concrete uh, and is abstract variable. If you change it, it does nothing in my knowledge. It can help you to uh, simplify the hierarchy aspect visually and uh, you can simply use it because you like uh, object oriented programming. Next, we have the band wide. Uh, we will see this one in the compression episode about everything about compression. Next, we have import mechanism, replication mode, mechanism mode, import mechanism parameters. Uh, this one is all about animation and we want to see it in the episode about animation. And of course, at last we have compression instance sheet uh, values. This one is about compression and we will see it in the compression of course. And so we can start the replication mode property. Last episode, I did not talk about replication mode mainly because I think we needed to first view the callbacks, how it's working and etc. in order to, to, to talk about replication mode. So, in a stage, each property of the state can have a replication mode based on the mode we can receive values from the owner or even modify it for ourselves. And here you have a little tab that uh, show everything uh, that you need to know about the replication mode. Uh, so we have four of them, everyone, everyone except controller, only owner and controller and locker for each player. What does it mean? Let's come back to our uh, true real world. And let's come back to the um, campfire uh, state. Yeah. Remember, uh, in this uh, mode, as a server, so on the server side, we are, of course, the server, and uh, we are the owner of two campfires. Each campfire uh, is controlled by its own client, and voila. This is mainly what uh, I wanted to uh, come back to. So let's start with the replication mode, everyone. If we modify the value on the owner, of course, uh, we will uh, receive a callback as the owner. On the client side one, we will receive the callback 
uh, because the, uh, uh, the value was updated on the owner. And as the client2, we will receive on this object the callback because the value was updated. And of course, as controllers or not, we are not able to modify this value because we are not the owner and we are uh, simply waiting for the update from the owner. So we can't modify it uh, by our own. Let's go to the replication mode. Everyone except controller. Uh, server side, if we modify uh, the value, as the owner, we will receive the callback. If we are the client side one, we don't receive anything because we are the exception. As the client side two, we are able to receive the callback because it was modified. But if we modify as a controller this value, we will receive the callback bind to this value, of course. And of course, if we are the server, we'll not receive it because it's the controller that modified, uh, modified it for his own purposes and the client to neither. Okay, let's go to the third replication mode, only owner and controller. As the owner, if we want to modify the value, we receive the callback. As the controller, we will receive the callback. As the client side too, we don't receive the callback. But if we modify it and we are not the controller of the entity, we will receive the callback from this entity if we modify a value. Let's go to the last one, the replication mode locker for each player. Of course, here, if we are the owner, we receive the callback because we modified the value. If we are the client side one and the owner modified the value, we don't receive any callback. If we are client side two, we don't receive any callback because it's the owner that modified it. If we are the controller and we modify the value that is on local for each player, we'll receive the callback. But the server don't receive it and of course the other client don't receive it. If we are not the controller of this entity and we modify it, we'll receive the callback. But the owner will not receive it and of course the client one will not receive it. That's all for the replication mode. Very basic but very long to explain. But before going to the next part of this video, uh, let's uh, here have an example to how to assign a state to an object. So here we have a new state that have nothing on it. In order to have it, let's compile the game in here in order to be sure that everything's good. When we go to the console here, we have bold compiler success. This means that we can go on the object and here we can go uh, take a bold entity and on this object we can get the new state that we have created. So now let's go to the object. An object represents an object asset type. Object assets are a special type of container that you can use to store related data within the same box. They are also defined in the bold asset window and you can consider them as substate as you can define the same set of properties as a state then reuse it object the object definition on several different states. So in order to create a new object let's simply right click on the bold asset space and take the new object here and we can rename it like a state we can add properties like a state we can remove properties same like a state and of course we can remove the object like a state so now let's take an example and do something with objects uh, so here let's take the example of our campfire and let's assign a simply a new object that will have uh, the name of food object. Uh, in uh, this food object we'll have three strings. The first one for the name of the food, the second one for the bake level and the fourth one for the spice that we have with this food. So now if we go to the state of our campfire we can assign 
new property as the food property that will be an object and on the object type we will select the food object simple as that and now what's about the code let's see so in order to update an object we'll do something very simple like this we're gonna simply select the state dot food dot property that we want to modify in the object and it will be modified as soon as we modify any property of our uh, object that we have in our state if we attach any a callback to uh, the object the callback will be called in our case we have attached the update food to the food variable and this makes that if we modify the name or the spice or the bake level we'll have this callback called in other case if we have only uh, attached a callback to uh, food dot spice uh, like here with the update spice we'll have uh, here called the callback of update spice so let's go to the array an array is a collection of values of the same type just like a traditional array array you can access items by index there is two parameters in it element type and element count so let's take an example and let's upgrade our campfire Let's upgrade our campfire in order to have a grill. And this grill will be an array of element type object, mm count for, and object type food object. Nice. So how is it translated in the code now? Let's see how to update our array. So in order to update our array, we need the index in which we will update the object. And of course, we need to select one of the properties of the object we cannot assign the object directly or the array directly because it's on read only and now let's see the callback side uh, pretty simple very basic uh, so in here we'll have uh, like the last time uh, a callback attached to a property or to the array itself and uh, in order to attach it to the array we need this little uh, squares I, I don't know how it's called <laughs> you know but you need because it's the path of the uh, of the property and the callback need to be like this uh, so we have uh, three parameters on this callback we need a state so I state we need the string for the property path and we need the array indices in order to get the indices at uh, which the value was changed so in order to first get the index at uh, where it was changed we first need simply to uh, get to the array indices uh, index 0 if we are have an array in the array we will go to the index 1 simple as that next we need to convert the state that we received to a state that we want to read so here the i campfire state simple as that and after that we can process uh, the synchronized values that we received okay and now let's go to the last th thing of this video which is the trigger so trigger works more like a function call that than a value synchronization it works as an animation trigger it can be used for firing a weapon as it is a one-time call with no other information sent so for example let's say we want to flip the food so it don't get burned let's see how to update or to simply call a trigger in order to call a trigger is pretty simple we will have in this state a function that we will call and this will simply trigger the trigger simple as that now in the callback part uh, it will be uh, some different so as usual we want to create a function that have no arguments but this time we will not uh, do a state dot add callback we'll do a state dot on flip food so it's the name of uh, our trigger flip food with an on 
uh, before if it and uh, we do a plus equal flip so our function we simply add a function to an event and here we simply add the flip function to the on flip food event simple as that so yeah thank you for watching today's video was uh, more versified uh, I really like uh, what we going uh, where we going with this series I hope you like it too I hope it can help you and yeah so next week maybe a video maybe a devlog we're gonna see whatever so have a nice day remember to code every day check your social media of course and see you next time